There were many wonderful musketeers, but there was nobody who approached Annette in popularity. She had this wonderful innocence about her. No matter what adulation she got, she was just a sweet, nice girl, very loving to the people around her. I knew way before she brought out to the public that she had been diagnosed with MS. We didn't tell her parents for 10 years. We didn't tell anybody. We were just living in hopes, you know, waiting on a miracle. Annette, she came from a very solid, solid family background. And no matter what, she never lost that sense of reality and gratitude for the good things that happened to her. Oh, oh that's great. Oh, thank you. I was trained as a ballet dancer since the time I was five years old. And along about the time I was 12 years old, we were putting on a recital, and Walt Disney was in the audience because he had been looking for Mouseketeer material at the time. And next day, called my dancing school teacher. Said, I'd like to see the little dark-haired girl. Could you bring her into the studio? So that's how it all started. We're the Mouseketeers. We want to say hello and give three cheers for all of you who see us every day. Lynette was the only Mouseketeer of the 24 of us that Walt Disney hand selected. And she came in on the set, and uh, we were all enamored with her. We were broken up into groups. I was lucky enough to be chosen for the one that did the roll call and the closing. So the audience got the most familiar with us, because, you know, we'd go, da, 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 Annette. Roll call. Cheryl. Bobby. Annette. I loved when I got to do my ballet numbers. And I remember Jimmy Dodd had written a song called Annette. Who's the little lady who's as dainty as a dream? Who's the one you can't forget? I'll give you just three guesses. Annette, Annette, Annette. One day, Mr. Disney came up to me and he said, Wow, you must have a lot of Italian relatives back east watching this show. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, the fan mail and the gifts coming in for you, young lady, are just phenomenal. We'd go shopping. And when people would see her, they would just point, and then somebody would work up the nerve to say, oh, please, you know, we sign an autograph. Oh, I love you. You're just so wonderful. She was always so kind you know, to anybody that wanted to meet her. The first thing she did by herself was the Annette series. She played a poor farm girl who was so backward with the kids in school, she went to live with a rich aunt. You must be Aunt Lila. I'm Annette. Annette? I ended up being cast as one of the girls. Annette and I spent time together when we were doing that. We just clicked and We've been friends forever. We thought alike, we acted alike, and we were both very, very shy, so we could relate to one another. Hey, Annette, how's about singing a song for us? What'll I sing? A corny little song was written for me to sing for all the kids to make fun of me because I was a country girl living in the city. Well, there were so many requests to, to buy that song as a single, and Walt Disney came to me one day and he said, Looks like you're doing very well as a singer. I'm gonna sign you to a recording contract. Well, I was scared to death because I didn't want to ever sing. How will I know my love? How will I know my darling? Whipper will give me a sign. How will I know he's mine? When she used to say, I can't sing. She sang beautifully because that beauty came shining through. For my 16th birthday, Walt Disney knew that I was crazy in love with Guy Williams, who was Zorro. And Walt Disney came to me one day with a script, and he said, how would you like to appear in a Zorro? And I said, you're kidding me? And he said, well, now that you're all grown up, here's your script. 
And it was such a thrill for me that Mr. Disney would think of, of such a wonderful birthday present. I would like to ask you something. Do you still want to find him, huh? He's my father, isn't he? Walt Disney, he was like a mentor or a, a second father to her, and he guided her and gave her a tremendous advice. During so many different times, I, I wish he could be with me, with us. And um, I know that he is. And that makes me happy. To this day, you mention Walt Disney's name to her, and her eyes fill with tears. She just adored him. Just to point out how really special he was to me, I had always gone by the one name, you know, on, on my sweatshirt. So when I stayed under contract, I, I wanted to change my name because nobody could pronounce Funicello. And we didn't even say Funicello then. My mom and dad sort of Americanized it and, and pronounced it Funicello. So I went to Mr. Disney one day and I said, please, please, could I change my name? I would love to be Annette Turner. And he said, Annette Turner? He said, aren't you proud of your Italian heritage? And I said, yeah, I'm very proud of it, but nobody can pronounce my last name. And he said, first of all, young lady, you are mispronouncing it. It is not Funicello, it's Funicello. It's a beautiful Italian name. Once people learn how to pronounce it, they won't forget it. And I said, yes, sir, thank you. <laughs> and he was right. After the Mickey Mouse Club had already broken up, I was lucky enough to get Bob and Dick Sherman to write my very first top 10 song, which was called Tall Paul. Chalk on the sidewalk. Annette was our lucky star. She was the one that made the lucky break for Bob and myself because Walt was listening to all the songs that Annette was recording, and he sort of noticed something in the material we were doing. And the next thing we know, uh, Tutti Camerata, our uh, musical director, called and said, can you give us some more material for Annette? And we started writing specifically for Annette. We wound up writing a lot of material. After each song made the charts, I thought, how much longer can this go on? I don't sing. Well, Ned never fancied herself a singer, but uh, any singer that reaches the public and has, has them go in and buy the records has got to have something. Annette's voice was very soft. She was being overpowered by the band, so Tootie went out and said, Annette, can you double your voice? I would sing the song the first time, and then you listen in the earphones, and you sing it exactly the same over your original voice. And it became the Annette sound. He's my mountain. He's my tree. We go steady, Paul and me. And all of a sudden, we had this wonderful thing. And Annie became a big, big star. Tommy Kirk and I did a lot of pictures together. We worked well together, and he was another favorite of Walt Disney's. So he paired us together quite a bit. I played the girl next door, as I usually do. Francesca certainly seems to find you attractive. And of course, I was crazy about Tommy Kirk in the movie, but I was the girl next door and he ignored me when this little French number came along. I used to see these pretty little blonde or red-haired girls come to the studio and I would say, what is she here for? Well, she's being auditioned for Babes in Toyland. 
And all of a sudden, one day, Mr. Disney came to me again, and he said, come with me to the hairdressing department. We want to see how you would look as a redhead. So they, they put a red wig on me, and he said, there's our Mary Quite Contrary. Annette was in a film called The, the Horse Masters. Tommy Kirk and I were sent to England, and it was a, about an English riding school. No Western saddle, we had to go English and jump fences. I must have gotten thrown every day. There was nothing for me to hold on to. All the balance is done with your knees. Merlin Jones, I, I played the girl next door again, as I always did. Crazy about Tommy Kirk. American International just decided to come up with a, a picture on surfing. And they said, let's get uh, the little dark haired girl from Disney and Frankie Avalon. Mr. Disney had full script approval of everything that I did. And he read the first script, which was Beach Party. And he came to me one day and said, I'd like to ask a favor of you, Annette. He said, I know that you're on the beach and all the girls will be bikini clad, but um, you have an image to uphold. And I would request of you not to wear a bikini. Would you please wear a one piece? And I said, you got it. And I respected him so much, and uh, I felt that he was right. He always made the right choice. We got married in 1986, and she was starting to have problems with her eyesight. And uh, she was diagnosed in 1987. The night she told me that she had MS, we just sat and cried. We kept it hid for 10, 11 years. For such a private person, it was a huge decision to go public with, with her illness. We'd go out to dinner, and she got wobbly walking, and she would always hang on to my arm because she was stumbling a bit. People would call me and ask, Is, isn't it OK? Is she drinking too much? And uh, I would say, no, no. They said, well, something's wrong. Her kids were getting kind of taunted at school, such as, well, my mother and dad were out to dinner, and they saw your mom, and they said that she was drunk. She's the quintessential mama lion. So the minute her kids were being affected by it, she thought, no, that's it. I've got to let people know what's going on. And there was just an outpouring of love. The letters come from all over the world wanting to say thank you for being such a role model. I read those letters to her, and she enjoys them, every one. She never wanted uh, sympathy, you know. She always wanted to help somebody. She and I started uh, the Annette Funicello Research Fund for Neurological Disorders. I think Annette keeps going with a positive outlook, with her faith, her family love, and friends. And I think she faces it just like she did on the Mickey Mouse Club. You never know what's coming your way, and you accept it and go on with what is brought to you. It's just unbelievable how much people think of her, and she always was one to say, I never did anything. I said, no, you only won the hearts of all of the teenagers in the world. When I think of the impact that Annette had and still has on the world, I'm not surprised. There are certain people who are magical, and it's because she is magical. And when magic touches you, it never leaves you.
My friendship with Annette has been one of the most joyous friendships I've ever had in my life. She's still as beautiful today as she was the day I met her. little babies right here. Yes, I owe everything to these ears. I truly do. 